Well, later this week, judges at the International Court of Justice that hear disputes between countries will hear arguments from lawyers representing our country as government is asking the court to order Israel to stop its combat operations in Gaza. Government says that Israel is guilty of genocide or potential genocide after killing around 25,000 Palestinians in Gaza in response to the Hamas attacks on Israel. Both South Africa and Israel, as I understand it, are signatories both to the International Court of Justice and to that court's declaration against genocide. Professor John Stremlau is an honorary professor of international relations at Wits University. Professor Stremlau, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time on The Pulse tonight. Uh, do you believe South Africa is a strong case against Israel to present to these judges? Yes, I do, uh, but it will be tested uh, later this week in the preliminary hearings because my understanding is that South Africa will seek, uh, in, a, in effect, a temporary injunction uh, that will make uh, the case that there is a plausible case for uh, genocide and therefore there ought to be a ceasefire because the civilian population of Gaza is at risk. Um, as I understand it, literally any other country that belongs to the International Court of Justice could have brought this action. Um, I'm slightly surprised that, I mean, many other countries have condemned Israel's actions as we have, but I'm slightly surprised that we're first. No other country has done this. Well, Stephen, this is an election year, and I will take uh, note of this event as a hopeful sign that maybe we're returning to the values of Nelson Mandela. There has been a long time uh, association uh, with Palestine, and, uh, and I, I personally have encountered uh, the deputy mayor of Jerusalem, who uh, was, a, was a partner of uh, uh, John Dugard, who's leading the the A-team of uh, South African lawyers to there. And uh, at that time, Ben Benisti said uh, he didn't want to visit South Africa because he didn't want to see apartheid on a grand scale because he'd seen it already in the West Bank and Gaza. And so uh, th this, this goes back a long, long time. And, uh, and, and it, it is right for South Africa to take the lead in it because it has had the special relationship with the Palestinians, which the Americans and everybody else understands. Um, so we will argue that it's genocide. Israel's also going to argue um, against our application. I think it's previously ignored um, some cases in the International Court of Justice. How do you read their decision to actually take part in this hearing? Well, because they they are are parties to the to the. Um, sorry, Stephen, I was getting another call. Um, they are parties to the to the um, uh, anti-apartheid, uh, I mean, anti-genocide uh, convention, and so therefore they think they have a a reasonable case. And the Americans have said that uh, the South African case is meritless. Uh, but uh, the the president of the uh, of the world court now, Joan Donoghue, is uh, in fact an American. So <laughs> it's very interesting to see the politics of this on play out, and we will get some indication of it uh, during the course of this week, and then it could be uh, years uh, for, to to, to re actually get a ruling on this because both the, uh, uh, the, the, the South Africans and the Israelis are really lawyered up and they really have, uh, it, it, judging by the 84-page brief that South Africa has ta tabled, they've really done their homework. I mean, this is, this is no fooling around. Um, so if we win um, and we get this provisional ruling, what happens after that? I mean, would Israel really respect a ruling from the international? I mean, would Israel really listen to an international court in this way? Well, th that's extremely interesting, and I've been through the, the judges uh, and the countries represented on the um, on the 15-member uh, uh, court. And by the way, is Israel and South Africa both have uh, the opportunity to to provide a, a, another judge to sit in on the proceedings. And South Africa has nominated Digang Mosineki, who is a very very distinguished. Uh, ex-deputy uh, head of the Con court and uh, 10 years on Robben Island and 8th chancellor of the University of Edvardersron, for heaven's sake. So it, it's going to be a very serious presentation, but the um, Israelis feel they have a case to make that this is not plausible. 
because even the right-wing government of Bibi Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, has said that, though they just want to ex expel two million, uh, uh, or reportedly said, two million uh, Palestinians, and the rest can stay there, but he, it, 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 he's hell-bent on annexation. He's never accepted the two-state solution. So um, the, the, the Israelis have a harder case to make, it seems to me, but I'm biased on this, than do the South Africans. But the politics of the, how these uh, 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 countries will vote, you know, the, 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 uh, the Dangor, uh, the director general of, uh, of the, of the uh, Durko has, has said that, well, the BRICS countries are all with us on this. But in fact, uh, you know, the Chinese have got their problems with the accusation of genocide against the Uyghurs. The Russians are already, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, in a personal sense, because because the ICC is just for for individuals, uh, he's already been indicted by the ICC. Is he really going to want to um, vote a yes for the South African case? And then you, the the president of uh, Joan Donoghue uh, is is an American uh, of the of the court, and so it's going to be extremely interesting. Um, as I understand it, if the court rules against Israel and Israel does not obey the court, which is probably the most likely outcome from what you're suggesting, the issue goes to the United Nations Security Council, and then are we back kind of where we are already, where probably the U.S. would veto any move against Israel. So I suppose the question then becomes, does a ruling by the International Court of Justice, a provisional ruling in this case, that this is genocide or potential genocide, is it going to make any difference? Well, again, you know, it, this is a legal question. I'm not a lawyer, but it's also a political question. And with the uh, divided uh, uh, opinion in the U.S. over the merits of this case, and Biden is at risk of losing younger voters who are very pro-Palestinian, for example, and whether it plays out in any way, um, to make a ceasefire more likely and a two-state solution more likely. Bibi Netanyahu has always opposed the two-state solution. Well, the Israelis have to find some way to get new leadership, for heaven's sakes, and then get this, get this god-awful humanitarian crisis behind us and, uh, and, and stop the carpet bombing and the denial of food, fuel, and energy to the uh, innocent civilians, women and kids, who are not only being bombed, but are also being starved. Professor John Stremlau, Honorary Professor of, of International Relations at Wits University, really appreciate the time. Thank you very much indeed.